In this video, we'll cover an overview of Nucleus. We'll take a look at the various ways of connecting to Nucleus and some unique features you can take advantage of while working in Omniverse. Omniverse is a rich platform that helps developers, 3D artists, and designers get the most out of 3D workflows for any industry. Omniverse takes full advantage of Pixar's Universal Scene Description, also known as USD, allowing artists to easily collaborate on a 3D world from different applications, reducing time-consuming import and export. If you're new to Omniverse, you can think of it as a platform with five main pillars. Nucleus as the database for storage and microservices. Connectors give 3D applications direct access to Nucleus storage and features such as live collaboration. The Kit SDK offers endless development possibilities for custom tools and applications. Omniverse also provides access to NVIDIA simulation technologies like PhysX, MDL, and artificial intelligence. And of course, powerful rendering is handled using RTX for full fidelity visualization. Nucleus provides several convenient ways to access and manage files stored in its database. Nucleus Navigator is a dedicated app providing access to files as well as user administration. A common Navigator interface can be found in the launcher and can also be accessed in a web browser. Omniverse Drive offers access through a familiar Windows interface that syncs just the files requested. You can also navigate Nucleus data using the connectors in your favorite 3D application as well as from kit-based applications like USD Composer or USD Presenter. An easy way to take advantage of Nucleus is to install it on your local machine. Open up the launcher, navigate to the Nucleus tab at the top of the screen, and you should see a window that looks something like this. Click on the plus sign next to Add Local Nucleus Service. You'll be presented with a path. Click Next. Type in a username, password, fill out the information, and complete setup. After a brief wait, your Nucleus localhost is installed. Once installed, all you need to do is connect. Click on Connect to Server, type in server name, in this case it's localhost, and just like that, we have access to our Nucleus server and we're ready to get started. Let's start off with a brief overview of the Nucleus Navigator interface. You can see over on the left, I have a list of access points for my local computer, as well as any Nucleus servers that are available to me. I've conveniently got some bookmarks right at the top for frequently accessed locations. In the middle, this is the default place where you would connect to a server or create a cloud server. You can also see down in the middle, I have a repeat of all the Nucleus servers available to me. Let's go ahead and start by clicking on one of my bookmarks. This is the project that I'm working on, and you can see with my folder selected, you can see the information regarding the details of that folder as well as permissions. If I click on an individual file, you can also see that I have checkpoints available to me, which we'll talk about in a bit. I can also choose to download this file, copy the URL so I can send it to someone else, or open the file inside USD Composer. I'd like to collaborate on this project, so I'll need to set up a few users. Nucleus gives administrators easy access to set up users and groups and manage permissions. Remember, the controls for that are found in the lower left-hand corner. Adding users is as easy as clicking the Add button and filling out the information requested. I'll also assign the users to a group. This will make setting up permissions a little more convenient. To create a group, I'll follow a similar process just under the group section. At the top, I'll click to add a group and add the name that I'd like. Now I just need to add users that need access. Because users inherit group permissions, I can set up permissions for the entire group instead of individual users one at a time. If I need to restrict access to a particular file or folder for a single user, I can do that manually by selecting the file that I want to restrict access to and changing the permissions for that particular user. Let's go back to the main screen and set up a few more things. We'll customize Nucleus Navigator to make it easier to access data that we need for our project. Along the way, we'll take a look at some improvements we've made in order to maintain consistency between locations where you access Nucleus servers. So it's easy to find our data no matter what environment we're working in. I know my project is located on my local host server and it's titled Evermotion House. I'm gonna click here and point out the fact that Evermotion was nice enough to let us use this file for our demo. I'm gonna right mouse button click on the file and add a bookmark. We'll just call it Evermotion House and this makes it easy to find this location. You'll also notice inside Omniverse USD Composer, my bookmark shows up as well inside the content browser, synchronizing across different Nucleus access points. I'll be using one of my servers to collaborate, so I'm going to right mouse button click on it and rename it to Project Share as something easier to remember. And just like my bookmarks, inside of QSD Composer, the new name of my server appears inside the content browser. 
Synchronizing all these points across different Nucleus servers makes it fast and predictable to access your data as you're working inside of Omniverse. Another way of taking advantage of Nucleus is by running microservices. I want to add some props to my scene, so I'm going to use Deep Search. Deep Search is a collection of microservices that enable natural language search terms in order to find things in your database. It's all powered by artificial intelligence. There's no tagging required or metadata. You can see if I hover my cursor over the search box in Nucleus Navigator, I'm presented with a couple of new icons. Clicking on the button to the right of the camera, I'm presented with new options. The top one is AI Search. This is how I know Deep Search is enabled on this particular Nucleus server. This is where I'll enter the natural language search terms in order to find some props for my scene. We'll start by using coffee. As you can see, the results that I get refer to coffee. Coffee cups, coffee pots, images of coffee beans, and even a teapot. Let's get more specific and type in coffee maker. As you can see, my results are a little bit refined. I get rid of the coffee images and things lean a little bit more towards coffee makers and coffee pots. Let's try a couple of other search terms. We'll use headphones. As you can see, I get about what I would expect. Models of headphones, images of headphones, and things that are shaped like headphones. Let's search for something really specific. I'll type in whisk. I know I have a lot of kitchen items in my database, so as you can see, I get exactly what I'm looking for. There's a couple of different whisks in my database. Notice that if I right mouse button click on any of these files, I have a few different options in order to use them in my scene or in my project. I can download the file directly. I can copy the URL and paste it into USD Composer to open the file. One of my favorite options is to bookmark the items. This allows me to gather a lot of props together all at once and use them later inside my scene. If I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for, or if I'm just looking for some inspiration, Deep Search lets me type in arbitrary search terms. This enables me to find things that might be a little more difficult to discover just using traditional folder browsing or folder searches. I can type in words like spring, and as you can see, I get flowers, springtime colors, and things that you would expect to associate with the word spring. Let's try fall. Again, as you can see, I get results that look like fall. Back in the search box, you'll notice a camera icon. This button allows me to search by image. Here, even though the model and brand was not included in the file name in the image, we get results with the same model and brand of the car in the image. Let's use this tree as an example. You can see again the file name is not indicative of the content of the image. I can even right mouse button click on any of the results in order to find something similar to that specific search return. I'll go ahead and speed up a few search returns in order to gather up a few props that I want to use in my scene. I'll bookmark them as I go along, making it easier for me to find them later on inside USD Composer when I want to add them to my scene. Back inside USD Composer, you can see all my bookmarks are available to me. You'll also notice that I've enabled the Deep Search browser inside USD Composer. Having it available in both locations makes it really convenient to use Deep Search no matter what environment I'm working in. Working in Nucleus allows several ways to collaborate. Because we're also working in USD, we have access to powerful layer workflows in order to keep the flow of information lightweight and flexible. We can choose to work in live sessions between users using different applications or work concurrently, updating as needed. Let's create a simple example using USD layers and lay out the table props for our dining room table. I'll start by just dragging and dropping my table layer into my layer editor, and this consists of the geometry representing the table props. I'll also need the table in order to place the props on, so let's bring the table geometry in as well. Now we need to create a layer that will represent the positional information of all of our table props. We can go ahead and create one by clicking the Create Sublayer button, or in this case, we'll just drag one that's already been created. This new props layout layer contains all the transform information that we used to position the items onto the table. Remember, each one of these layers represents a file on disk. At any time, we can click on the layer and locate where that lives on disk by looking at the layer path. Notice that we also have access to the checkpoint for that particular layer. Right now, we're only looking at geometry information as well as positional information. As I've mentioned, using USD allows us to separate different types of 3D information into layers. Let's go ahead and drag in a materials layer in order to add materials to our props. 
Notice that it also exposes a couple of different problems with our layout. The books are upside down, and we might want to maybe mess up the table just a little bit in order to make it look a little more used. I could either choose to do that on this layer, or I can bring in a fix layer that contains that information. Of course, it's easy to see that we now have rotated our books as well as rotated around our plates and napkins. Lastly, let's bring in the table materials to finish off our dining room table. From here, let's save this scene out and we can use this as another layer inside of our larger scene. Here we are inside the main assembly for our house. All we have to do to bring in our dining room is look for the new layer that we created earlier and drag it into our layer editor. You can see that our fully assembled layer table and props file is brought into our main scene. The rest of the scene is assembled much in the same way. We have props and furniture for the living room as well as props and furniture for the kitchen. Viewing lighting changes using USD layers is as easy as muting and unmuting layers. I'll turn off my daytime lights, which exposes the interior lights for my scene, as well as the pool lights that are shown outside and reflecting in the room. Of course, we can continue to make changes to our scene using the existing layers, or we can add new layers with new information and continue to make creative decisions in full fidelity. Another powerful way of working with Nucleus is by using checkpoints. Checkpoints are historical versions of any file that you're working with. They are created anytime you save a file and can be found inside the content browser right over on the right hand side under checkpoints and information. You can see that I have a list of checkpoints, users, dates, and times that the different changes were made. Accessing these is as easy as just dragging one of them into the scene. You can see here there's my green seats with dark chair and black legs. I can drag the orange table in with the orange seats. Here's one with aluminum legs. And along the way, there's different changes that were made that we have access to. As I mentioned, the notes can be saved when you go to save with options over on the right hand side. Save options have checkpoint comments. These are useful for making notes anytime you make a change to the scene and makes it accessible to other users as they work. Notice that as I drag these into the scene, I'm creating payloads. These payloads also have access to the checkpoints inside the properties in your scene. This can be useful when combined with USD layers. Here we are back inside of our house and we've incorporated our dining room table payload with our checkpoints intact. We've also incorporated it into our layer editor. So all we have to do is make our table layer the active layer and scroll down into the property editor with our payload selected. Here we have a list of the checkpoints available to us and we might just want to go to the latest one. You can see that the changes are made inside of our scene and we can continue working. Nucleus checkpoints combined with USD layers are a very powerful creative tool and make working inside of Omniverse USD Composer that much more flexible. Of course, Omniverse Nucleus is a rich environment in which to collaborate. Collaboration sessions can be useful for teams making creative decisions around layout, cameras, materials, and lighting. Individuals can use Omniverse connectors for live sessions between their favorite 3D application and kit-based apps such as USD Composer. Teams can also work live by joining individual layers as needed from different connected 3D applications and viewing the full scene in context of any changes made. Here in Maya, we're connecting to our local host we set up earlier. We've used our connector to open up our kitchen and props layer, which has also been added to our main scene file that we've been working with. We also connect from our USD layer in USD Composer by clicking on the same lightning bolt that we used in Maya. Using our Maya camera for navigation, we can alter the scene by moving, duplicating, or even deleting objects. We can make camera decisions live in the context of our main scene that might be worked on by others in different Omniverse connected applications. Here we see materials being altered from Adobe Substance 3D Painter, updating live in our scene complete with lighting and other props. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about Nucleus or Omniverse in general, head over to the Learn tab inside the launcher. Here you can find a wealth of information including live streams, tutorials, forums, documentation, and lots of other resources that you can use. I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at Nucleus. Thanks for watching.